Hello and welcome to another episode of The Hobo and His Girlfriend. My name is Hobo Tom. Got my nice machine gun Carl Anderson shirt on. We saw Carl Anderson's abs tonight again. Uh, my girlfriend again is still having car problems and she has to work. Oh no, she has an interview tomorrow. Good luck, sweetie. Um, I have to actually go to work early tomorrow morning. So again, I'm going to postpone how to make yummy chicken wraps for when I do my Lucia Underground episode, because I think that's when I have the most time, I think. Don't worry, you guys will see that. Cooking with a hobo. Part, like, trace or quattro or something by now. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about liking, sharing, and subscribing. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Now let's really talk about SmackDown. This was amazing. I mean, it was so good. The matches, a couple of them were rematches from SummerSlam. These were so much better. Although I guess I have, do have to give SummerSlam some credit to setting this up. But let's talk about SmackDown tonight. Starts off with The Miz. The Miz is awesome, and, the, and Maurice looks amazing. We're just having a kid. Whoa. They must do some really good makeup. It's not even the makeup, really. The woman's makeup is looking worse and worse. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I've seen too many Instagram pictures of them, like, real and stuff. For some, which I, I know Sonya Deville actually does look a lot cuter. When she's not wearing makeup. It's weird. Let's talk about SmackDown and The Miz. Again, Maurice looks great. And for this whole promo, you could tell that both of them really had a problem in not laughing. I mean, just not smiling, trying to be serious. The Miz is awesome. Of course, Daniel Bryan, well, during the, the whole promo, Miz gets wetted. He's like half laughing. Maurice is having a ball. <laughs> She's like, you're getting wetted. Uh, Daniel O'Brien comes out, calls him a cow coward. That New York crowd is so easy to bait. He, Daniel O'Brien's phrase to me says, you're a coward. And the whole crowd starts saying, you're a coward. Wow, like putting the freaking carrot in front of the, the donkey. Uh, Miz had the not even Miz. Maurice had the line of the night. She said, Oh, I forget how it went. It's like, You're not Daniel O'Brien. You're Daniel Bella. Oh, smack! That was good. That, of course, prompted Brie Bella to come out and, and knock the Miz out. Just punch the Miz. The Miz did the gentleman thing and took the punch. At least he didn't let Maurice get slapped. <laughs> the Miz redeemed himself in all gentlemen's eyes. He took the bump for his life. Miz, you're awesome! Let's set up a, a Hell in a Cell match. Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. Should be interesting, I guess. Then, this was a stacked card, and the wrestling was just amazing. You have Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. And this match started out like a shoot fight. Because Jeff Hardy just started to lay in to Randy Orton. If it wasn't a shoot, Randy Orton, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Jeff Hardy, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. I mean, that was really fun. It just felt like a shoot. It was good. I mean, from there, the next spot, Jeff Hardy goes up top, gets shoved off top rope, Falls chest first onto the post, falls back first onto the steps, 
and then falls face first onto the floor. Amazing! I mean, that was good. I don't even think they could have planned it that that well. You just saw that. It's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really sell and bump this. That was good. I mean, from there, Orton starts just beating him on the outside. I mean, throwing over tables. Tables are prominent. Not getting go, not even going through tables, but going over tables and throwing things over tables, which we'll see at the end. I mean, it was just. Amazing. Hardy had his come back after the commercial break uh, with a wisp of the wind. Then he has to watch getting crotched. It sells great. If you know what you're doing, you're just going to sit down on the turnbuckle with some force. Yeah, your butt hurts. But I want to say that's how Alexander Black hurt his groin. So again, it's one of those things. Please be careful, Jeff. You're getting old. Uh, then, I mean, oh, with that, he did the ear hole and the cringe, the cringe, the utter, ugh, no, the cringe, the one shot of that woman in the crowd. I mean, she felt Jeff Hardy's pain. That was awesome. And then, I mean, it was a tough to finish, baby. But Jeff Hardy, he ain't taking no more. He's going to say this is a tough to finish. And stop Randy Orton in his nuts. I mean, he just stepped right on, right on, right on the little Randy. <laughs> stepped on him right in the groin. That was the instant DQ. Hardy then goes nuts. I mean, it was really amazing. The only thing that I... Oh, the next spot, they're, 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 they fight on the outside. They go over the table, over the barricade. And they wind up in the, in the, in the tech area. Poor tech people. The tech, tech people are, are so underappreciated. And it's always their spot that always, during the show, gets wrecked all the time. So I have to give a thumbs up to those tech people. But he did a swanton bump because he got Randy Orton laying flat on the table and then went up to the top of the crates, which looks a lot taller than a ring. Did a swanton bomb from the crates onto, onto Randy Orton through the table. And then he just smiled. He had that sick, I enjoy pain smile. This whole match was amazing. This was a surf, surf match. I mean, it was that good. Then you have a promo between the club and the bar. You had a Carl Anderson ab shot. Again, they're, they're good at it, but I don't like seeing the club reduced to comedy roles unless there's going to be a beating involved. If a beating gets involved, they can do as much comedy as they want. Um, again, I, on the next match, you had Naomi, who looked utterly amazing in a light up glowing fur coat. I, I love her props. They're just fun. They're original. They're different. I mean, light up stuff's been around for a while. I think Double J, Jeff Jarrett had the light up hat. Um, Chris Jericho had the light up vest. Sure, other wrestlers had light up stuff. But no one had a glowing, light-up, polka-dotted fur coat. That was amazing. And then Peyton Royce came out. And... Oh, Corey Graves had a really good line. I, I dig it, Meltzer. Because there was a whole controversy last week of Meltzer saying how Peyton Royce looks soft. Peyton Royce looks amazing. Um, my only real complaint, look-wise, I mean, really, is that they do a lot of makeup for some reason. And it's it's getting a lot 
more makeup y faker looking. If that's my one complaint, hey, I can't say anything else. <laughs> I love how the well, it was it was Peyton Royce and of course Peyton Royce and Billy Kay come out and and, and do their do, do their um teas and stuff and run the crowd down. And Brooklyn's just a dumpster fire, which it probably is. I mean, there's there were some good comic spots. Oh yeah, she kept on ducking, ducking, ducking the kicks. And then she ducked again and just got hit in the face with a knee. That's like a classic, almost cartoony move. I, this was so good, though. I mean, Peyton is, is a great ring general. I mean, she knows where she is in the ring. Which is good. That, and she hit a perfect plex for a win. I haven't seen a perfect plex pin a person since Mr. Perfect. Well, wow, that's a lot of peas there. Peyton Royce pinned Naomi with a perfect plex, perfected by Mr. Perfect. Pinned by a perfect plex, perfected by Mr. Perfect. Say that five times fast. But again, that, that was just amazing, though. I mean, even Naomi had a really weird eye, eye makeup. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't like it that much. It looks fakeish. It looks really like too late '80s, early '80s glow wrestling style. That's all I can say. Again, this was a fun cheeseburger match. Again, then we had had Becky Lynch come out. Oh, Becky! I didn't have my amazingly cute, hot, sexy girlfriend, Becky Lynch. You're amazing. She comes out in a new show. She's hot. And she was pissed off. And the funny thing is she tries to run down the crowd, but the crowd the crowd just kept on chanting Becky, Becky, Becky. I mean whatever she did, they they cheered her. She could not make boo her. Which I, I guess is a mark of a good heel, but is she a tweener? She's not a face anymore. Attacking their supposed best friend. It's not a tweener move. <laughs> oh, someone <laughs> during the Becky Lynch promo held up a sign and said, get a real friend. The whole crowd was behind Becky. It was amazing. It was, wait, wait for it. It was glorious. I mean, it was that good. I mean, there was, she was just angry, and then the crowd started to cheer for her, and then she's, like, confused. Again, my only really knock on all of this is that the makeup looks terrible. I mean, she has, like, plastic face. And, like, something was, like, wrong with her left eye or something. I don't know if that happened during the match, but it, 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 it didn't look right, though. I mean... Other than that, Becky's hot. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't come after me, WWE. They wear too much makeup. Whoever did the whoever put on the makeup was was doing a bad job. If that's the only thing I can complain about, hey, get used to it. I even tell my girlfriend she wears too much make, too much makeup sometimes. So if if you're on TV and you wear like you have like plastic face. Again, Becky Lynch, if you see her on Instagram when she looks really natural, she's she's amazing looking. Just like Boo Sonya Deville. I mean, she looks so much prettier without makeup. A lot of them look prettier without makeup for some reason. I don't know. I'm old. What can I say? But then, again, she tries to run the, down the crowd, but the crowd agrees with her. I mean, Becky is just... Mean Becky is good. <laughs> I like... I like Mean Becky. I should make a sign that says, I like Mean Becky. Charlotte Flair comes out. Yeah, cat fight ensues. Exactly what you thought would happen. When Charlotte Flair come out, she got booed. It's like, that crowd... 
oh, Charlotte's supposed to be the face. Becky's supposed to be the heel. The heel gets cheered. The face gets booed. Amazing. They were still chanting during the fight for Becky. Paige comes out. Paige got booed. The crowd booed her. She tried to get the rest of the women's locker room out. The referees are trying to break him up. The crowd's booing Paige. They're chanting, let them fight. While still chanting Becky Lynch or Becky, Becky. And, the, and whenever Charlotte does something, whenever Charlotte fights back, Charlotte gets booed. This, this was just amazing, though. Again, uh, fans, the fans were still chanting for. Oh, just some side notes. Um. Oh yeah, during the Jeff Hardy match, there were some holy shit chants when Jeff Hardy started to go ape. Again, so easily baited as this New York crowd. It was just the, the the crowd wanted to do something. The wrestlers gave them something to do. Excellent. I mean, this was a oh yeah promo. Then we have Andrade Cien Almas La Sombra El Eagle. And Zelina Vega? Zelina Vega looks hot and white. The thing you can't do in white, ladies. Do not wear black panties while wearing white pants. Everyone can tell. Versus Rusev and the ravaging Rasha Lana. And I'll tell you what, this was an amazing match. I mean, to begin with, I was kind of worried. I'm like, going to be another rematch. Rusev loses again. But, I mean, Rusev was selling the, the chest slaps to begin with. And, and then I knew like, something special is going to happen. I mean, I was, I was a, I mean, I don't know what they, was SummerSlam the practice match for this? This match was good. Lana gets better all the time. Selena Vega is still short. I know Lana's fairly tall, but I mean, to put on like a sleeper, Selena Vega literally had to jump up a good foot off the ground to sleeper hold Lana. And again, if you're wearing white outfits, don't wear black panties. Um. It was oh Lana can throw a shirt. She threw that shirt at the, that's that some kid like a freaking baseball. I mean, again, you had the chance of Rusev Day. And let's go almost. Oh, it's supposed to be Andrade. Yeah, boring. Aiden English then shows up. So you have the two women going going at each other. In the ring because Andrade Almas was knocked out by Rusev. Rusev and Andrade Almas are, are still the legal people. I don't know what was going on. I think Lana eventually threw Zelina Vega out of the ring. Andrade Almas picks up a chair. And as he goes back to swing, Aiden English shows up, makes everything right, grabs the chair from Andrade Almas, doesn't lay a hand. On Andrade Almas just kind of pushes him back in the ring. Just, just Andrade Almas, is, he's on the apron. He's trying to swing the chair. And then he just takes the chair from him. Rusev cold cocks him. Brings him back into the ring. The stomp. The accolade. All is good with Rusev Day. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. In English, he was vindicated. And this was amazing, though. The fan did it. Then you had a pre. Then you had a quick promo from Shinsuke Nakamura, again saying how he, he retained the North American, the, U, the United States Championship. Getting brands confused, but again, it's Shins, Shin, 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 Shinsuke Nakamura. That was actually pretty quick. AJ Styles was there uh, with with Renee in, in the in the checkered chef's pants. Um, AJ Styles, they started to chant like, like, who's your daddy? It's like, whoa, this crowd's vicious. 
And then he, he started to get his lines out. Then Joe attacked him from behind. And, uh-oh. This might be... This should really main event Hell in a Cell. I think what they are going to do to main event Hell in a Cell... They'll, prob they'll probably have Braun try to cash in. They'll make up some excuse how the bell never rang, so it wasn't a cash in. For the next three or four weeks... He'll try and cash in, but so something screwy will happen, and he can never do that. So I, I'm afraid that the Hell in a Cell main event is going to be Roman Reigns is going to say, "Okay, you want me, Braun Strowman, Hell in a Cell, let's go," and that would fit with Braun pretty good. Jeff Hardy, my fear is, my more realistic fear is that Jeff Hardy gets his Hell in a Cell moment. And like does a swanton from the top of the cell. Either into the ring or on a table. Please don't die. Please don't die. But um and probably an AJ Styles Hell in a Cell. Along with maybe a New Day Bludgeon Brothers Hell in a Cell. There'd be so many potential Hell in a Cell moves. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair in a hell in a cell. Oh, wow, that's good. I just want to know why this was such a special edition. This was like... <laughs> well, 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 now I'm looking back, I can see why it's a, why it's a special edition. Because it was amazing. It was almost better than SummerSlam. And SummerSlam for the SmackDown matches were darn good, except for the pre-show. I think all the SummerSlam matches, I think, were at least a cheeseburger or, if not, a surf and turf. I think I gave the AJ Styles Samojo a surf and turf. Or maybe it was the play. I forget. But, again, that again that match in itself was amazing. And it told a good story. And there were at least reasons why AJ would freak out and flip out and just start smacking Samojo in the head with a chair. So at least it gave some some rational understanding of it. Um, then then Paige comes out. Um, there's going to be a rematch next week. Charlotte versus Carmella back for a title for her man. And our truth comes out. Our truth is like everyone pins Carmella for a shot. I'm, I want to pin Carmella for a shot. And she, our truth gets ushered off, and, and you just hear Paige, and you hear Carmella say, "Our truth, get out of the way." And then Paige says, "Our truth, put her down." I don't think it really did anything, but off stage, at least it lets you think about it. And then, really, the flaming yawn match of the night. The new day is new day rocked. New day rocked versus the Bludgeon Brothers. And for the new day, it was Woods and Kofi, because Big E's ribs were hurting, and he was he decided to eat ribs instead of pancakes in the back. And this is started off by a brawl, and this was awesome. They they were going over tables. Harper Harper threw an announced chair and, and hit Kofi Kingston with it. I mean, so so bodies are going over over tables, chairs are going over tables. The New Day's going over tables. The Bludgeon Brothers are going over tables. The New Day, for some reason, thought it was a smart idea to bring out a ladder. I don't know what they were thinking. But I don't know what else they keep underneath that ring. There were like bottles of water, chairs, toolkits, something shiny looking, something that looks like buttons, like big red, green, yellow buttons. Like, the heck is that? I mean that's amazing. I want to. I want to see. I don't really want to see what's under a ring. What What do you keep under the ring? Is it like the storage area? Can't because there is no like true arena storage. I guess I don't know. But I mean, oh my gosh, that was a fun match. Oh, hi, Dee Dee. Oh yes, and also congratulations and best wishes to that couple on their honeymoon there. Um, I mean this was just. Amazing though. Oh, when they just started to beat on Kofi. <laughs> Some guy, the fans were so crazy. Some guy said, 
He has a family, man. It's like, whoa, it's like, this isn't the NWA in the 70s. It's like, chillax. And like in the AJ Styles, like there's some woman going crazy. I love you, Samoa. I love you, Samoa. You're the best, show. Can I get a picture with you, Joe? I love you, Samoa. It was, it was, the fans were, were crazy. I mean, I guess if you're going to do a honeymoon, I mean, you go to NXT, you go to a SummerSlam, you see you're wrong, and then you see SmackDown only in a four day set. My girlfriend's going to be upset because now I'm getting ideas. We're way in the future, though. Way in the future. I mean, again, they started to tear, they, they even started to tear the ring apart. They took the nice cushiony part and exposed the harder LED apron part. I mean, you, so you have ring destruction, tables, ladders, chairs, announced chairs, bottles of water, crates of water, buttons, everything coming out. This was amazing on the new day one. I was amazed. Again, this was a filet mignon mash. I don't know why they couldn't do this at SummerSlam. SummerSlam was like the keys to WrestleMania, though. It was great. And that was SmackDown. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And very quickly, again, I've been copyrighted a couple times. Yes, it's like some, some minor finger wag. But I don't want to get the, the slap on the wrist because that's a 180-day suspension. So I'm just very going to quickly recap The Miz and Mrs. Again, you have The Miz. And for some reason, it's nice to see this because he goes through every guy thing. Every husband, boyfriend thing where his, in this case, his wife, Maurice, in my case, my girlfriend, sure this holds true for a couple other people. Um, the women can, you can use a cell phone with amazing, just amazingness. I think on my cell phone, I have zero apps. I call people, I text people, I send a few pictures. Once I ordered a pizza on it, and I was really terrified about that, and I use it for a calendar and alarm clock. My girlfriend uses her phone to like schedule work, sign into work, GPS device. I just follow the the nose of the chipmunk for my directions. But again, like this, Maurice can't figure out how to raise the volume when her husband's at WrestleMania. So she calls her husband at WrestleMania and says, how do I use the TV? It's like, we've had the same TV for seven years. My girlfriend does not know how to use my TV set, but yet she has this like cell phone that she can like program robot cats. Um, and then, of course, they, they rent the tour bus. First time they try and prank Marjo by kind of leaving her at, at, the, at the rest stop. They go on. I feel bad for the cats. Um, they have. They they should know that at the midnight hour, all cats go crazy. I think my cats goes crazy about nine thirty, ten o'clock. Because generally, we, we play with. I play with her. I have a little cute cat toy string. because this is what my cat likes. Just toss this string around. Mouse squeaks, I, I toss this. Pull it, and, and then she goes absolutely crazy. And then she likes her attack mat. I think I fill it up with catnip. And that kind of gets, gets, gets her, her fuzziness out. So again, their cats are kind of bored. Again, if cats don't get some time to, to go nuts, they just start growling. I think my cat growled a couple nights ago because some other cat entered the yard and just being territorial. And then at the second truck stop, they actually left the mother-in-law at the truck stop. That sounds like something out of National Lapoons because Mar Marjo said she was going to use the bathroom. They had two bathrooms in, in the van. Uh -uh, she'd rather use a truck stop bathroom. That's that's not good. And they left her there. And overall, 
it shows again that the husband was, was right. It's like we should have just gotten a U-Haul, hooked it up to the Jeep, and we would have been here already without all this stuff. Maurice even said, yay, hu yes, husband wins. Again, it was a really fun episode. It's, the, the whole difference is that it's lighthearted. It, it shows like real couple things, but it's not stressful. It's not drama. It's not sad. It doesn't make you like, it puts a smile on your face. It doesn't make you feel like this. Oh, there's my kitty cat. Let's see here. Well, she followed it for a while. Let's see if I can get it to update us. One more toss. Well, again, my name is Hobo Tom. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Everyone have a good night. Bye. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Hobo and His Girlfriend. My name is Hobo Tom. Got my nice machine gun Carl Anderson shirt on. We saw Carl Anderson's abs tonight again. Uh, my girlfriend, again, is still having car problems, and she has to work. Oh, no, she has an interview tomorrow. Good luck, sweetie. Um, I have to actually go to work early tomorrow morning. So again, I'm going to postpone how to make yummy chicken wraps for when I do my Lucia Underground episode because I think that's when I have the most time. I think. Don't worry, you guys will see that. Cooking with a hobo. Part like trace or quattro or something by now. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about liking, sharing, and subscribing. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Now let's really talk about SmackDown. This was amazing. I mean, it was so good. The matches, a couple of them were rematches from SummerSlam. These were so much better. Although I guess I have, do have to give SummerSlam some credit to setting this up. But let's talk about SmackDown tonight. Starts off with The Miz. The Miz is awesome, and the and Maurice looks amazing. We're just having a kid. Whoa. They must do some really good makeup. It's not even the makeup, really. The woman's makeup is looking worse and worse. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I've seen too many Instagram pictures of them, like, Real and stuff. For some, which I, I know Sonya Deville actually does look a lot cuter when she's not wearing makeup. It's weird. Let's talk about SmackDown and The Miz. Again, Mar Maurice looks great. And for this whole promo, you could tell that both of them really had a problem in not laughing. I mean, just not smiling, trying to be serious. The Miz is awesome. Of course, Daniel Bryan, well, during the, the whole promo, Miz gets wetted. He's like half laughing. Maurice is having a ball. <laughs> She's like, you're getting wetted. Uh, Daniel Bryan comes out, calls him a cow coward. That New York crowd is so easy to bait. He, Daniel Bryan's phrase to me says, you're a coward. And the whole crowd starts saying, you're a coward. Wow, like putting the freaking carrot in front of the, the donkey. Uh, Miz had the, not even Miz, Maurice had the line of the night. 